Hello everyone, it's a very exciting day today because we have cotton candy cake. A very expensive cotton candy cake. It's just like fluffy sugar. I think cotton candy is supposed to be like a penny. Okay, let's eat it right this here. This was like $40. We need a knife to cut into it. Oh, right. <laughs> you guys. I needed to lower my seat for this conversation. <laughs> for some reason, somehow, my camera got flipped to a setting where it didn't record the audio just for the next few clips. It is 11.30 p.m. and I have to go through and try to lip read my own lips and Flynn's lips and figure out what we said and like, I'm gonna try to do voiceover. It's gonna be a mess. And I kind of thought this video was gonna be a not really edited video. I did a big long tortilla talk at the end of this video and so I thought, oh, this will be a quick edit and and then now I'm gonna be just working way too long on this. Anyway, the next clip you're gonna see is me and Flynn trying the cotton candy cake, but with uh, my own voiceover uh, over our voices, because there's no audio. Please enjoy. Okay, here she is. Let's open her up. I'm pretty sure I got this on TikTok shop. Oh, it smells good. Oh. It feels funny. So during this part, I really wanted you guys to hear how awesome it sounded to cut into a cotton candy cake. So this was some really awesome ASMR, but uh, you don't get to hear that. Sorry. Ugh, can't even get it out. <laughs> that one kind of exploded. Someone try it again. Ooh, so pretty. Oh, oh, oh. You wanted that one? Okay, I'm gonna do pink and orange. Mm, oh, whoa, the flavors. That's crazy. I really want to try to get a piece that doesn't fall and explode part. That's very, very sugary. Look how pretty it is. Probably like a regular cake better, I think. What about you? This. You like this better than regular cake? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. That's shocking. Wasn't that fun? Next, you're going to be seeing uh, Colleen's Crystals portion of the vlog where I talk about the different rocks that I needed to switch out of the tumblers. I finished the rocks that I found when I was up at Moonstone Beach when Eric and I went up north to see the football game. The ocean basically polishes those rocks for you. So they're not shiny, but they are very smooth. And so I didn't need to put those rocks through stages one and stage two. I only put them through stage three and four. And then I also had to uh, switch out the rocks that were the backyard rocks. But then after these clips, I realized that the audio wasn't working on my camera. So just these rock clips are the last clips you're gonna see with my voiceover but the rest of the vlog I'm not gonna do too much editing with I'm not gonna add a bunch of music or whatever she's gonna be kind of like raw just chill footage so um, I hope you enjoy uh, that but oh my god I'm such an idiot I don't know how that happened so here are the rocks from Moonstone Beach I'm just rinsing them off at this point I was really nervous because they looked kind of rough they don't look super smooth I was worried I would have to redo all of the stages again because they just looked kind of rough so I needed to dry them off in order to find out if they were actually polished so I had to take them out one at a time and separate them from all the like white ceramic media, which actually took way longer than I thought it would just because I had so many tiny, tiny little pebbles in there. But once they're on the towel, I let them just dry completely. And then I found out that they actually did polish. I was super shocked. And then here I am switching out the backyard rocks from stage three into stage four. Again, I'm nervous about these because they're literally rocks I found in my backyard. So we'll find out in a week if the backyard rocks actually polished or not. So stay tuned. Okay, so these are the big rocks, not the tiny ones. The tiny ones are all really smooth. These are all more like jagged and kind of have a lot more texture to them. Typically, I would not put that past stage one ever. Like look how jagged it is. But I'm shocked, it's still kind of polished well. Like this is not a wet rock. This is just polished and shiny. So yeah, these are all of the bigger rocks that I got from Moonstone Beach. And I'll show you the little ones in a minute because those are the ones that are amazing. Look how cute that little nugget is. So yeah, these are all the big pieces and now I'll show you the tiny little cute pebbles. Okay, so these are the little tiny pebbles. I love these so much. I think they're so pretty and I'm very excited to try to make like jewelry out of them, beads out of them or something, but I just love them. There's a lot of agate, a lot of moonstone. I really just like the look of the super smooth rocks, um, way more than the ones that are more jagged and rough. But yeah, these are the little tiny rocks. Aren't they so cute? Where's the moon? Right here. <gasps> Good job. Do you see the sky? Right here. Do you see any grass? Right here. Do you see any mommies? Right here. Do you see any Maisie's? Right here. Where's Wesley? Where's Wesley? Um, it's me. You, Wesley. It's me. It is you, yes. It's two. Yeah, you're two. I'm a two five. I'm five? I'm three. You are not three, you're two. No. <laughs> yes, you're two. I'm 45. I'm 45? 
Okay. Maisie really wants to be three. If you ask them how old they are, Flynn will say five, Wesley will say two. Maisie will say two, but then usually corrects it and goes, no, nah, I'm three. She McKenna, really wants to be three. can you sit down? McKenna, uh, please. I'm sorry. Please. My frame fell off. Okay, That's here's why. your new frame, car. Hey. Sorry. Uh, car exploded and knocked uh, you over. Two. You're two? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. How old are you? Two. What's your favorite color? Red. Black. Black? Oh, what's your favorite color? Purple. Is your favorite color purple? Pink and purple. Pink and purple? Yeah. What's your favorite animal? Doggies. Doggies? Uh, kitty cat and pigs. Doggy, kitty cat, and pigs? Yeah. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> a horsey? Yeah. You like horses? <laughs> yeah. That's a good horsey sound. Yeah. What does a cow say? Mm. What does a dinosaur say? Wow! Wow! What does a bear sound like? A bear? Rawr. No, they sound like. Rawr. Car? Mm -hmm. No, it goes like. Whoa. Hey, Flynn, there's a bug on your head. Go like that. Huh? Shake your head. There's a bug on your head. Hit your head. <laughs> What's a kitty cat sound like? Yeah. What does daddy sound like? Mwah. <laughs> he sounds like. He never says that. He says lovey. He says lovey. He says lovey. Welcome to Tortilla Talk Tuesday. Tortilla Talk Tuesday, the idea that you guys came up with so that I could just answer a bunch of questions on Tuesday and not have to edit too much. Which I really appreciate you guys looking out for me like that. That is so sweet. But there were some really great comments and questions on the most recent video. Sorry I keep touching my hair. It's in a stage, guys. I don't know what to say. My hair is in a stage that I really do not like. It's either cut it all off again or let it grow out. And I think I'm gonna let it grow out. Let's read your questions. Okay, Lilac Dreams Becca said, Tortilla Talk question, as a neurodivergent individual, hey girly, I find it so easy for me to snap at people over small things like the sound of chewing. A change in schedule can ruin my day and cause me to be so irritable. I want to know how you are so patient and communicate so calmly when you are upset. It's something I have noticed you do really well and I want to be able to do the same. I am shocked that you said that because if there's one word I would never use to describe myself, it would be patient. There are lots of things that make me snap like you said like uh bugs is one of them not just like looking at a bug but a flying bug or gnat near my face a fly something like that i turn into an actual satanic person like i can't be around little tiny floaty gnats or bugs that fly near your face so there's a few things like that that like i just can't control i will like snap and i need to remove myself from a situation like that because i get so so irritable i am not i've never been a naturally patient person i'm extremely impatient patient when I get an idea to do something I have to do it immediately I have to finish it right away like I don't like waiting for other people to do things I want like I don't even my husband and I don't even like to go to restaurants because we don't like waiting on someone to bring us food and to bring a check not because they're not doing their job well enough that is a hard freaking job the restaurant industry and like the food industry in America at least like I don't know about everywhere else but in America they work very hard and are paid essentially pennies and have to rely on tips of people who oftentimes don't tip them enough or at all anyway that's a whole other topic but I think I think having kids has forced me to learn how to be more patient. Obviously, I want so desperately to be as patient as possible with my kids. Eric and I are, are a pretty good team with that kind of stuff because like if I notice him getting, you know, irritable or frustrated or exhausted or whatever, or if he notices it with me, like, you know, we're starting to get a short fuse or something because like they're kids, like my kids are kids and kids can be really hard <laughs> and um, when that happens, you know, sometimes you're when you're a parent, you're human and like you feel like you're gonna snap and you feel like you're you're just like, yeah, I gotta get out of here. So we are pretty good at like noticing before that happens. If I start to get like irritable or um, maybe a little bit short or something, Eric will be like, hey, love, why don't you go um, go chill for a second and I'll take the kids and I do the same for him. Or we'll simply just be like, hey kids, follow me. We're gonna go do something in this room just to get, instead of being like, hey, why don't you leave? Sometimes we'll be like, hey everyone, we're gonna go out, play outside for a minute. Like we, we kind of, there, I'd say once a day, a moment like that happens where we kind of like help each other out by say, seeing like some frustration starting to happen. So having a partner who can pick up on that kind of stuff is very helpful. Something I learned in therapy a really long time ago and it works with loved ones, family members, friends, my kids is instead of reacting with like how I feel or what I'm thinking, um, just simply repeating what the other person says. Not like a robot or like rudely, but just like, you know, let's say Flynn's upset and saying like, oh, Wesley took my toy. Um, instead of being 
being like, well, Wesley gets a turn. You know, I would be like, what I'm hearing you say is that Wesley took your toy and it looks like that's really upsetting you. And just simply restating what the other person has said and then expressing like empathy towards their feelings about the situation or what you perceive their um, feelings might be for that situation, that goes miles for me in all kinds of relationships is just validating someone else's feelings and just literally repeating what they say but in an empathetic way and making sure that they feel heard and understood before moving on to a solution or onto your feelings or whatever now obviously this is way easier said than done and this is not my, i don't think i'm any kind of like genius or expert on this kind of stuff this is stuff i learned in therapy people had to teach this to me and i still struggle with it all the time but when i'm able to do it like that is very helpful also there are some things that are just maybe out of our control a little bit as people with like neurodivergent brains like the sound of chewing like being annoyed by that like you'd mentioned that's an actual like phobia for some people and um for me like you know bugs really does trigger me <laughs> like if bugs are flying near my face it really does trigger me into like a rage that is terrifying so just not not putting myself in situations where I know that's going to be happening or removing myself from situations where I know that will be a thing like I don't go on hikes you know I don't go to locations where I know there's gonna be lots of bugs but yeah patience is something that I have to work really hard at it's a huge struggle for me I'm really really bad at patience and things I've learned in therapy have been a big help but also I think that's a reason why I've always kind of tried to do everything by myself like I instead of like trying to be patient and having other people help me with certain tasks I'm like I'll just do it myself because I know I can do it faster and I know I can just do it get it done how I want to get it done and I don't have to like think about someone else waiting for them to get it done like I can just do it myself and then if I take too long it's my fault I can't blame anyone else I can only blame me so um that's actually caused a lot of problems for me because I just I'm so impatient to have other people help me a lot of times that I just will end up doing trying to do it all by myself and that obviously is impossible so anyway I'm being way too long-winded so let's move on to the next question this is from Dr. H hi Colleen first of all I love watching your videos after my shifts at the hospital oh my gosh you work at the hospital you are a queen a hero possible tortilla top question what is your dream do you want to be on broadway again are you happy doing youtube i was also wondering if at the end of some of your vlogs if you could do a queen's chords segment and play piano um i love that idea so i'm gonna do a queen's chord segment at the end of this video tonight and your other question was um what is my dream do i want to be on broadway again i'm happy doing youtube um i have always really loved doing youtube i really love sharing my life online it is a huge part of who i am i really genuinely love it so much i would love to be on broadway again someday but I'm just grateful it ever happened at all like I don't feel like I was ever worthy to do that or experience that and I can't believe that that happened for me because that was my dream since I was a little girl so I'm just so grateful I got to even do it once so that is you know a total dream come true and I'm grateful for it my ultimate dream I guess I mean a lot of my dreams have come true and that I can't believe I can even say that but I think in the future a dream would be to just be able to continue performing in any capacity. I love performing and another huge reason I've always loved my job and performing and doing all the cool things that I've gotten to do in my career in my life is I really loved like making people happy and making people laugh and providing people with entertainment during hard times and so it's my dream that like one day I can do that again and be like a source of happiness for people. That's all I've ever really wanted to do online and that's what I hope to do moving forward is I just want to make people happy and smile and feel entertained in a world that can be kind of yucky sometimes. And that's another dream of mine that that can become you know a big part of my career again. Another huge dream of mine that I've had literally for as long as I can remember is I really I really want to open up a school of like the arts like a musical theater school or camp or program of some sort that where kids can come and learn musical theater and learn dance and singing and art and just any kind of art any way to express themselves through art to be able to provide a place where kids can have that and it's either affordable or free or just I don't know I just want it to be accessible for any child anywhere to like be able to perform and express themselves and be who they are and put on musicals and plays and, and do art and whatever I don't know I just that's always been a dream of mine and I desperately want to do it and I know that I will someday in some capacity but I just don't know when or how or what that looks like but that's something I've always wanted to do oh my god these answers are really long and pretty boring I apologize TL power said if you have not seen the Valentine's Day Oreo ladybug cookies please look them up too cute okay what <gasps> Oh my god those are so cute hello oh my god i have to make those okay thank you i'm totally gonna make those lucas said the way i was hoping to have a wicked trailer reaction in this video okay yes i got so many comments about this on my video that i posted today like about the super bowl because during the super bowl there was a trailer for wicked the movie that's coming out on thanksgiving and i'm so excited 
sorry I didn't mention it. The Super Bowl like was a very hectic day. Like we barely even got to watch it. I did get to watch the Wicked trailer. Um, it was on while Eric was trying to change the settings of the TV to look better for the Super Bowl. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa, oh my God, is this Wicked? Ah, turn it off, get the settings off. Get it. I started like screaming, I was like, get the settings off. Oh my God, I can't see it, I can't see the screen. And he was like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I was like, do I need to see it, I need to see it. I am so excited to see that movie. Obviously, I love my girl, Ariana. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys want the real tea? Do you want to know how I really feel about it? Or do you just want me to be like, I love it, I'm so excited. Which I do, I love it, I'm so excited. I think the casting is brilliant and I'm really excited to see those two incredible, powerful, talented, genius women in those incredible, powerful roles. That musical is brilliant and beautiful and the story is great and it's just there's so much about it that's just wonderful i just love i love wicked i'm sorry call me like a loser musical theater girly for being so generic and basic but like i freaking love wicked i think there was a phase in my life where i was like oh wicked is so overdone and i was totally faking that if you play any wicked song near me and if i am within earshot of a single note a single chord from wicked i will start singing along full belt like i cannot resist it is an incredible musical i'm really really excited for it. The one thing I was kind of like, hmm, when I watched the trailer, oh my gosh, I even say it's a lot of CGI, which I just don't think I was expecting. It's not that that's a bad thing. I think they needed to do CGI to like make it look as mo magical and whimsical as that story needs to be. But I just think for some reason in my mind, I was like anticipating and expecting to have like practical set pieces and like for it to look real. It's, there's nothing wrong. Like so many people love CGI. Like the best movies that when all the things, I don't know anything about movies are like those CGI movies. Like people love those CGI movies. I'm just not a CGI girly. Like when I see movies that are CGI, I'm like immediately not interested because it doesn't look real to me. So it took me a second to be like, oh, okay, this movie will be pretty much all CGI looking. So that kind of took me aback, just a tick. But I took a little tick back and then I took 18,000 leaps forward. I am so excited because like I said, the casting is brilliant. These people are so talented and the story is so wonderful. The music's so wonderful. Most people in the world are happy with CGI and love CGI and think it's incredible and cool. And I don't know how they would have made those sets look realistic anyway. So I guess they had to do CGI, obviously, you know, like who am I? Like I'm nobody, I'm this like, you know, my opinion doesn't matter anyway. Um, it's gonna be brilliant and I'm very excited to see it. And I am not a big movie musical girly. I don't like movie musicals most of the time, but I think this one's gonna be really good. Oh my god, this comment made me laugh so hard at myself and how stupid I am. Okay, Carrie Hemmer said, double boiler, not double broiler, because I was making my little desserts and I said, you need a double broiler to do blah, 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 blah. And it's a double boiler, which makes sense because you're literally double boiling what you're cooking. It's you're boiling water underneath a pot, so it's a double boiler. I don't know why my whole whole adult life and child life, my just life in general, I have thought it was called double broiler. That makes no sense. Why have I always called it a double broiler? I cannot believe that at my old age, I'm just now finding this out. As someone who bakes very often, like pretty much nightly, I am mortified and embarrassed that after every recipe I've looked at, after every video and tutorial that I've watched, so many people have taught me how to bake so many things, I legit have always called it a double broiler, always. What? That makes no sense. I can't believe it. And thank you for educating me on that because I'm stupid. I also appreciated this information. I love getting educated. Always Jello said, I don't know if you're interested in this or not, but astronauts don't actually eat freeze dried ice cream. I ate freeze dried ice cream with Flynn in the last vlog. It's crumbly, which is not good for space where there's no gravity and the crumbs could go flying all over the place and get into nooks and crannies. And oh my God, you're so right. I did learn on an episode of Story Bots, which is a show, a kid's show that my kids watch. They often eat most of their foods like wrapped up in a tortilla like a wrap or burrito. They like make everything a wrap or a burrito because then it can all be stuck inside of a tortilla and it's not gonna be floating around. I don't know what made me think that like astronaut ice cream and astronaut foods that are just freeze dried foods that are crumbly, obviously they can't use those because it would like get up in the vents and get in all the, like it's unsafe. I cannot believe I never even thought about that. So why do they call it astronaut ice cream? This, that is very false advertising. Okay, this is the last question I'm gonna answer and this one is the tea, oh, okay. Lilac Dreams Becca said, do you have any funny gym class stories from school? I feel like you were like me as a gym student back in the day. Nobody wanted me on their team during the volleyball unit because I was afraid of the ball and would run from it. And I used to get points taken off my grade from walking during the track unit 
when we were supposed to be running a mile. I would literally go out of my way to distract my gym teachers by talking to them about the most random things just so I didn't have to participate. Also those disgusting freaking pennies we had to wear. I don't know what a penny is. Can I, like P-I-N-N-I-E-S is what you said. What is that? What is that? I don't even know what this is. They're like little like tank tops. This is a penny? What's pennies? I've never even heard of that. Okay, so here's the tea. Technically, I've never been in a gym class. I mean, I've been in like PE classes in elementary school, but that was the extent of my gym class like stuff. I am not an athletic person. I am just not. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at sports. I'm not good at exercise. I don't like it. There's no exercise I've ever done that I've enjoyed. I don't like sweating. I don't like being out of breath. I don't like being sore. But I started homeschooling in fifth grade. So just kindergarten through fourth, and PE in kindergarten through fourth it's like what do you have to do like some sort of handball type game like I don't even really remember PE from those times I was pretty young I do remember having to do the crab walk and having to climb a rope or attempt to climb a rope once and I couldn't do it and I was really really embarrassed anyway after that never took a gym class again and how did I get away with this because obviously in the state of California you have to take PE or a gym class of some sort well I did PE like community PE classes through the homeschooling groups that I was a part of and they just weren't I don't remember them being like strenuous or hard I think it was just like we kind of played games at a park and I just remember that like there was some competition at the end where we had to run and I just walked the whole time because I didn't want to run and then I was mad because my sister obviously was a really fast runner and she's very athletic and she got like a gold ribbon or something and I got like a participatory ribbon and I just remember being like annoyed and embarrassed by that yeah I was homeschooled for those like junior high years middle school years and that was my PE experience with that and then I went to high school and luckily my high school let musical theater be considered PE and one year I was in anything goes and it was a tap show and we had extra crazy rehearsals for the tap numbers so that was considered strenuous physical activity so I did that and then I was in Pirates of Penzance and I was in Les Miserables and both of those for some reason were considered PE as well so I got my PE credit from doing musical theater and then in college I did um, dance class like musical theater dance class so I did tap ballet jazz like that kind of stuff for my PE credits I never really did the whole like dodgeball thing I don't think I've ever even played that I'm really I don't I don't know that I've ever really had a true gym experience. Like I've never gotten dressed in like a locker room, like at a school or something like hanging out in the locker, getting ready for a PE class. Like I've never experienced that. I've never been on a track and run around a track as far as I can remember. So I just didn't really have a PE experience, but it sounds like if I did, I would be a lot like you. I would probably just like give up and just walk instead of run um, and just be embarrassed at how not athletic I was. Anyway, this was a really long tortilla talk, so maybe I won't play piano tonight. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see. It'll be a surprise, but I'm going to edit first. So if I still have energy after I edit, I'll play piano, but if not, I'll see you guys tomorrow or the next day or whatever. Okay, thanks for watching everybody and leave questions for tortilla talk for the next time I do one of these. Thank you. Goodbye.